Hi, I'm John Stanford and welcome to our first video version of Barometer, the Met Office magazine. As editor of Barometer, I hope to inform and stimulate your interest in weather, climate and the natural environment. What you hear today are highlights from the most recent edition, but you can read all the articles free of charge online at metoffice.gov.uk slash barometer. There's a definite theme this month and it's all about developing one's grey matter through learning and continued education. One of the lead articles is a spotlight on the Royal Meteorological Society and the close relationship the Met Office has with this prestigious organisation. Here's an interview with their new Chief Executive, Dr Liz Bentley. The Royal Meteorological Society and the Met Office have a strong and well-established relationship and I think they complement each other. The Royal Met Society has its independent status, it represents the community. And we've done joint collaboration on, on th things like WOW, um, our observing website that we developed together which has had over 100 million observations already. And also the chartered meteorologists, a, a professional qualification that the, the, Met, the Met Office has taken on board and many of their forecasters have started to use. Were you ever inspired by someone such as a teacher or relative to pursue a career in science or maths? Here at the Met Office, people like climate consultant Felicity Liggins, who joins me now, take time out from their busy schedules to do just that. Hello Felicity, you're what's known as the STEM ambassador. So what does that actually mean? So a STEM ambassador is someone who tries to inspire young people to study science, technology, engineering or maths. And can you give me an example of that? We have about 120 STEM ambassadors here at the Met Office and they do all sorts of different activities from going into a school to give a talk about forecasting to engaging with young people about the variety of careers there are out there in STEM. But one of the most exciting things that we've done over the last year is our series of science camps here at the Met Office. And um, what has that involved? So for the science camps, we had about 140 young people aged 11 and 12 come into the Met Office. They got to camp overnight and they got to meet lots of members of staff right from our science side, um, the technologists that uh, work here, and find out all about the different jobs that are done here and the science that we do. So how can people find out more about, about that? So if people are interested in finding out, they can read more of the Barometer article and also they can go online to our website and contact details there for them to contact ambassadors at the Met Office. Fantastic. Thank you ever so much for joining us. No worries. The Met Office is mainly associated with providing all the information that appears as daily weather forecasts. However, you may be surprised to learn that here at our headquarters in Exeter, there's also the Met Office College. It handles the training for Met Office staff and many forecasters from around the world. In fact, it's been around a lot longer than since we moved here in 2003. It's been providing meteorological tuition for more than 70 years. Today's students are just as likely to be learning from an offshore oil rig as sitting in a classroom. The college's online courses enable people to learn at their own pace, whether at home or at work. It has also recently run a 20-week online management course for people working in meteorological services in developing countries. Don't forget, there are loads more articles to enjoy in Barometer, including one all about the Met Office's key role in the recent report from the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change. Also remember, you can find articles from all of our Barometer magazines at metoffice.gov.uk slash barometer.